Solving quadratic equations by the square root method. We've solved quadratic equations by factoring, but not all quadratic equations can be factored. So this is another method that we can use to solve quadratic equations. We can use this method whenever our quadratic equation is missing the bx term, as in a quadratic equation looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Well, if it doesn't have this linear term, then we can use the square root method. In the square root method, we isolate whatever is being squared, and we do the inverse operation, which is to take the square root. The inverse operation of square is square root. That undoes it. And when we undo something that's being squared, say, for example, if we have a x squared sorry, not a, just the x squared equals 4. We take the square root of both sides, but when we take the square root of a number, we always have to put plus or minus in front of the number. The reason for that is we're saying, when we take the square root of something, we're saying, what can we multiply times itself to get that number? Well, to get 4, which we, we took the square root of, we could multiply 2 times 2, and that would give us 4, but we could also multiply negative 2 times negative 2, and that would give us 4. So we actually have two different numbers that would give us 4. So the square root of 4 is plus and minus 2. Positive 2 and negative 2 would both give us 4. So that's why anytime we take the square root of a number, we always put plus or minus in front because both the positive and the negative would give us the same answer when we square it. Um, another thing that I want to point out, whenever we're solving quadratic equations, a quadratic equation, the graph of a quadratic equation is a parabola. So a parabola looks like a U. It can be opening up or it can be opening down. When we're solving linear equations, our solution is where our line crosses the x-axis. So th if this was our line, and we're talking about where it crosses the x-axis, it would only cross the x-axis at one point. So this would be, this place where it's crossing the x-axis would be my solution to my linear equation. But when I'm dealing with quadratic equations, they can have two solutions. So these two points where my parabola is crossing the x-axis, those are the solutions to my quadratic equation. So now let's solve some quadratic equations. All right, number one has um, one is, uh, number one is x squared minus eight equals zero. So the first step is to get whatever is being squared by itself. Well, the thing that's being squared is this x. So to get it by itself on one side of the equation, I'm going to move the 8. So to move it, I'm going to add 8 to both sides of the equation. And that gives me x squared equals 8. Okay, so then once the thing that's being squared is by itself, we want to undo it by taking the square root. And like I said, for the number, we want to put plus or minus in front. All right, so the x, I mean the square and the square root cancel each other out, so the x is by itself, equals plus or minus the square root of 8. Now, anytime we have um, something that's being squared, we want to uh, simplify the radical something that the squ we're taking the square root of. We want to simplify the radical. So um, 8 is not a perfect square, but it does have a perfect square factor. The biggest perfect square factor of 8 is 4. 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. So when we simplify this radical, um, we get plus or minus 2 square root of 2, and that's my solution. Okay, for number 2, the thing that's being squared is not 
the 2x. The 2 is not being squared, only the x. So we need to get the thing that's being squared, which is the x, by itself on one side of the equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 32 to both sides. And I get 2x squared equals 32. Okay, like I said, the thing that's being squared is the x. So it's not by itself yet. The next thing we want to do is divide by 2. So I have x squared equals 16. Then, now that the x is by itself, or the thing that's being squared is by itself, I can undo it by taking the square root of both sides, plus or minus the square root of 16, and I get x equals plus or minus 4. Okay, for number 3, the thing that's being squared is not by itself. The x squared is what's being squared. So to get the x squared by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 36. Now the thing that's being squared is by itself. So I can take the square root of both sides, plus or minus, and both of these um, numbers in the fraction, the numerator and the denominator, are perfect squares. So I can take the square root of both of those. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 36 is 6. And any time we have a fraction, we want to simplify our fraction, and we get plus or minus 1 third. In this next example, the thing that's being squared is the whole x plus 6 because it's in parentheses raised to the second power. So the thing that's being squared in this um, example is already by itself. So now we want to take the square root of both sides, plus or minus the square root of 49. So on the left side, the square and the square root cancel each other out, and so I'm left with x plus 6. And on the right side, I have plus or minus 7. Okay, so now I'm going to get x by itself by subtracting 6. Now, I'm subtracting 6 from two things. I'm subtracting 6 from positive 7 and negative 7. So I need to work that out and get my two answers. All right, so this would be x is equal to a positive 7 minus 6, which is 1. And x is equal to negative 7 minus 6, which is negative 13. So I have two solutions to this problem, 1 and negative 13. I had two solutions to every problem. It was plus or minus 2 or plus or minus 4 or whatever. Um, this just happens to be uh, two different answers. So that just means if we were thinking about our parabola, instead of it being symmetric on both side, <clears throat> sides of the um, y-axis, um, so if they had plus or minus 2 or something like that, it would look like this. It's the same distance from 0 on both sides. But whenever it's something like um, this one, where it's 1 and negative 13, then it would just be lopsided to where it crosses um, at 1 and negative 13. All right, we have one more. <clears throat> Again, the thing that's being squared is by itself. 2x minus 1 is what's being squared. So we can go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So on the left side, the square and the square root cancel out, and I have 2x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 12. Well, 12 is not a perfect square but it has a perfect square factor of 4. 4 times 3 is 12, so we always want to reduce our radical. All right, so that's 2x minus 1 equals plus or minus 2 square root of 3. Okay, so now I need to get x by itself, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides. 
Well, I can't add the 1 to the 2, at 2 square root of 3 because they're not like terms, so I just have to write it out. So I have 1 plus or minus 2 square root of 3. And then one more step to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by 2, divide this whole thing by 2. <clears throat> and since I can't simplify that, this is my answer.